Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Good afternoon. This is Pastor Walter Martinez, and I'm here with Brad Cutliffe. Uh, a, uh, I would like to refer to him as a biblical scholar. <laughs> he knows the Word of God, uh, and uh, he gets great revelation from the Word. So it's an honor to be here with you, Brad. Honor Praise to be God. here with you, Pastor. Thank you, Lord always. Jesus. Uh, so uh, today, true biblical scholar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just, just adjacent. A, I'm just a shadow of the man. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said it quite like that. Uh, 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 today we're, we're going to uh, be teaching on a, on a a teaching called "How to Receive from God." Mm. Uh, this is something that came to me in three parts. Uh, one was this first teaching, which is the you know the basis of everything the second one was uh, the assistance of the Holy Ghost that mm -hmm. comes through the communion of the Holy Ghost and the third one is going to be on dwelling in peace and hope mm. uh, Amen. Uh, uh, all of it has to do with the concept of how to receive from God when we can learn how to receive from God uh, it's really an art mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, it's so obtainable for believers well if they said, just give yeah. themselves over to yeah. some of these practices that we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, I know. So, uh, 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 when it comes to receiving the promises of God, that can be somewhat uh, mysterious to a lot of believers mm -hmm. uh, or to everyday Christians. And when I say everyday Christians, I'm talking about those believers that don't spend too much time in the Word. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, so the Scriptures are, you know, distanced to them. They, mm -hmm. they might have some knowledge of the Scripture, right. but they don't really have the context of it right. uh, and really uh, have learned how to apply it correctly. And their, their, their prayer life suffers. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's important for us to understand that uh, uh, developing the heart uh, uh, that enables us to receive from God mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, but it also helps us to develop ongoing practices right. that become habitual in our lives and this is where uh, the source of all failure is we Absolutely. don't have the we don't have the practices developed. We we sometimes uh, we sometimes lean over to m more of what the things that bring us pleasure and happiness, right? Um, because it's 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 quick, yeah, and, and it's 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 right there, yeah. Uh, uh, but when God promises us happiness and joy and pleasure, uh, it's 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 uh, it can be. It's derived through certain practices that result in this. Right, exactly. That, it, that means that it's longer lasting. Mm -hmm. It's not fleeting, you know. Right. Uh, because pleasure, joy in the natural, is just dependent upon how things are going. Right. You know. Yeah, could change the <laughs> change the blink any of an eye second. I mean, yeah. you can go into the office and someone say something to you like, you're in trouble, and <laughs> boom, there goes your, your, right. <laughs> your continence. And, and all of a sudden, you go from being okay with the day with not again <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah uh so it's important for us to develop certain practices so that we can maintain a certain level of victory all the time mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh uh first of all we have to understand that we are spiritual beings now i know that sounds like you know typical everyone says that mm -hmm. uh but it's important uh because uh, spending time in the scriptures, meditating on the word, pondering the word, and of course then praying out the word mm -hmm. uh, is essential to uh, knowing the will of God. Right. See, if you don't know the will of God in prayer, then your prayers aren't successful. Right. Amen. That's right. Because you can be praying all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, for instance, you can be 
trying to use your faith to get someone else to, to comply to you. Faith isn't for that. Right. Right. Uh, you can't use your faith to manipulate people or to dominate people or to control people. Right. You use your faith to receive the promises of God. Mm -hmm. Right. So everybody, if everybody was using their faith correctly, then everything would harmonize. That's right. But because of wants, needs, pleasures mm -hmm. uh, that are not within the will of God for a particular person's life, that kind of gets confused and messed yeah. up. Uh, yeah. so, um, uh, <laughs> so it's hard for the believer to make that transition into uh, uh, living out of their spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, they know about it. Right. They know about the spirit life, but to actually make that transition mm -hmm. to move out of being dominated by the head and the emotions yeah. and then having a dominant spirit that's in compliance with the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. that's a difficult thing for people. Yeah, and especially if, these days. Yeah, and if that doesn't happen, well then of course you're going to be living your life pretty much like a roller coaster, you know, up and right. down, up and down. Right. And uh, you're going to wonder, why isn't the Word of God working for me? Well, it's because, you know, uh, uh, you failed to make that transition. In mm -hmm. other words, your, your life is being governed more by uh, emotions and feelings and thoughts, wants, needs, desires. Why can't I do this? Why are you always against this? Mm -hmm. uh, instead of s saying, Lord, Okay, what do you want me to do? Right. But you know what, Brad? People already know what God wants them to do. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, just don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so they they uh, justify it. Yeah. You know, they isn't that to me is terrible. But yeah. to them it's okay. I mean yeah. they'll say it's okay. God's not against me having fun. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. right? They, they'd say stuff like that, sure. uh, but at the same time, in their heart, they're like, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, but see, when that you have that in your heart, I know, it's because you know. Right. But you're right. not complaining. That's right. Because what you know in your spirit, once you've got the Word of God in you, and the Word of God becomes the, 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 the rule by which you live, uh, once you got that in you, and then the Holy Ghost brings that up to your to mm -hmm. your to the attention of your spirit, your spirit begins to sp speak to you, right? And you you have these knowings, right? In you, right? Yeah, and that's for those believers who 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 want to have a relationship with God, who want to Cause do because I mean, as you're talking, and as I was preparing, it's there's a foundation, and I I had actually was going over some script that those scriptures that the foundation of our lives as believers is the word of God mm -hmm. and when the, when the challenges of life come Jesus was talking about this that the winds will blow mm -hmm. and if you're if you're established on a firm foundation so we're talking about a foundation of living having a relationship with God and desiring to live out that relationship with God mm -hmm. uh, it, that's just one of the things that came to my mind is mm -hmm. where are we at as believers today are, are, right. are we are we living from a foundation that is, that I am, uh, you know, um, living a pl uh, in a place where I am praying and reading and pondering. waiting to hear from, pondering the scriptures and applying these things to my life? Or is, or is our foundation kind of, mm -hmm. you know, is it, yeah. is it shaky sand, you know? Um, well, sure, because of pleasures. Right, launch. right. And the Bible calls them lust. That's exactly right. There's, but, there's, but there's a lot of the world that is right. consuming a lot of believers. Right, and right. It's, and it's very, it's, and to your your point, to the point of the teaching, it becomes very difficult to hear from God, and very difficult to receive from God, and right. very difficult to believe. Right, because for anything, because what you want is not necessarily what God has planned for you as an individual. Right, right. Because as we were saying this morning. God has something for everybody, and right. it's not all the same. Right. That's you know, right. But there is standard things that yeah. God wants for everybody. Yeah. You know. Uh, but anyways, God is good. Uh, yeah, like, in, like what you were saying this morning about if you're not hearing from the Holy Ghost, you're going to be doing things on your own. 
you know, we have that resource, but, you know, we have to ask ourselves, am I doing, when I'm facing something, am I doing it on my, I really like that what you said this morning, am I just taking my own ability and trying to, and trying to accomplish whatever it might be, whether it's, mm -hmm. you know, Were finances or life or, or yeah. figuring out my kids or my work, am I, are we just simply doing it on our own? Mm -hmm. We don't need to be doing it on our own. No, because that, we shouldn't that, be doing it on our own. That indicates we have a, 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 a life that we're living in the natural. Right that's more centered on us solving the problem, right. more centered on our own pleasures and wants. Uh, but there's, there's another uh, life that God has for you that's dictated to your spirit mm -hmm. or your heart from the Holy Ghost. Right. And that what he has for you is the will of God for you and how God wants you right. to solve that problem to deal with that situation exactly. yeah. in a way that's successful for you, always right. in a way that's successful for yeah. you. Yeah, and specific to you. Exactly. Yeah, and, and, that, and in that way, because you had said in the beginning, these things can be so mysterious to believers, and they don't need to be. No, no. But they're it's mysterious like a when we're yeah when we're outside of when we're doing things on our own. The things of God are going to be a, or can be a mystery. So we use the word mystery to say it's hidden from you. Mm -hmm. You know, but but the Holy Ghost will reveal it to you. Right. You know, the things of God are are, are hidden mm -hmm. for us. You know, they're, they're right, not, right, they're not right, hidden right. from God is so good. Amen. Uh, again, whether we realize it or not, our uh, heart development is extremely important mm -hmm. because there is an inward there is inward information that we can receive that is often overlooked or um, disregarded. Mm -hmm. because of the lack of spiritual development. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's just, maybe it, it just doesn't make sense to our intellect, our prejudiced nature, mm -hmm. because our, you know, the human nature is very prejudiced. You know, yeah. it, 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 it's... Towards the things of the flesh. <laughs> well, it just wants. Yeah, it wants. You know, and it, it, there's certain ideas it just doesn't like and it won't accept no matter what the word says. Mm -hmm. So it's it's yeah, the prejudiced point. nature, yeah. you know, uh, and we see uh, we see that growing today more mm -hmm. and more and more. Yeah. Uh, everywhere we go, we see it growing more. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, 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 as we said, uh, uh, maybe it just doesn't make sense to our intellect or our prejudiced nature, and because it interferes with the way people want to live their lives. So it is. Easily mm -hmm. dismissed, mm -hmm. disregarded, or ignored. Right. However you want to say that. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we are using the word heart uh, allegorically to represent the, uh, inward, uh, the inward man, the spirit of man, mm -hmm. in which the Holy Ghost is in constant communication with. Right. Amen. Amen. So, a lot of times the Spirit of God feeds our spirit information and our spirit relates it to us. Mm -hmm. Our minds, not to our mind. So we have to understand the, ro uh, the role of our spirit in, in, this, in this area of wanting to receive from God. Everything that God does is created in that realm mm -hmm. of the heart or of the spirit. That's where it starts. That's where it ends. And, it, and when, that ha when it is completed, the materialization of it is in the natural or in right. the physical realm. Right. Amen. Um, if I said that correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 the idea is uh, the more developed our inward man is in the Word, the easier it is for the believer to live out of, a con out of, out of the control of their spirit and not mm -hmm. their emotions and intellect or That's personal good. wants yeah, or no. desires. Uh, when we say personal wants and personal desires, understand um, it's important for you to understand that there's things that, that, that the human nature wants. Now, when Adam and Eve sinned, the human nature became tainted by that sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. And therefore, the scripture says, and sin entered into the world right. by one man, Adam. <coughs> Amen. Uh, and then death by sin. Uh, so understand that when we talk about the human nature, we're talking about a nature that has been tainted by sin. Mm -hmm. And sin has its own way of doing things. Uh, let me say it like this. 
the sin nature is the nature of the devil. That's right. Which is always opposed to doing things the way God wants it done. Mm -hmm. The nature of God, the nature that you received when you were born again, uh, uh, seeks righteousness through the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. See, the Bible says, um, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So you got to understand, the Holy Ghost is promoting righteousness. That's right. It's prom prompting, promoting peace and hope. That's right? right. These are what comes through the Holy Ghost. Uh, and so when we see that the Holy Ghost is prompting, you know, uh, righteousness, wanting us to, to, to follow God's plan, uh, uh, because he's a holy, as we were saying this morning, he is holy. Mm -hmm. When Jesus told his disciples how to pray, he said, he said pray this way, uh, hallowed be thy name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Hallowed be thy name, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, in other words, holy is your name. Mm -hmm. Amen. So there's a separation from the way that the, the, the human nature or the sin nature would do things and the way that those that have the nature of God would do things. Right. Those that have the nature of God do things because they're prompted to do what's right. And that is given to your spirit. Mm -hmm. And then there comes these knowings that uh, our mind cannot grasp. Right. Our mind wants to dismiss. Our mind will justify. It's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? There's nothing wrong with that. It might not be to someone else, right? But it might be for you. That's right. But the only way you're going to know that is to develop your spirit. Mm -hmm. What does God call you to do? How does God want you to live your life? How is your life affecting people around you? Right. Amen. Your children. Mm -hmm. your employees or the people you work with, your co-workers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as a pastor, how, how does my life affect the congregation? Right. You know, how does my behavior affect the congregation? I'll tell you how it will affect the congregation. The way I choose to live is the way they'll choose That's to live. That's right. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. We've seen that over and over and over again. Yes. Pastors choosing to, to do something and they're doing it in front of people in their church and they're, those people are acting just like their pastors. Are right. Doing. If it's okay with the pastor, it must be okay. It must be okay. It right. must be the will of God. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Your pastor is not God. God is God. Amen. Amen. And no one is exempt from the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Not even the pastor. Amen. Amen. So, uh, you know, I'm saying that knowing that if you're a pastor and you're listening to this, you're on the right side of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Lord be to God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Amen. glory be to God. I better get on with something here because I'm not going to get <laughs> done here. Uh, when the believer develops his heart life, uh, spiritually speaking, he has obtained what I call a healthy heart mm -hmm. that has gained the ability to receive from God. Amen. If you are serious about Receiving from God, always search the scriptures to see if there is any requirements that you need to fulfill in order to receive any of the promises of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you stop and think about it, when you're reading the scriptures and there's a promise, there's always, there's generally a requirement. That's right. Amen. And That's so right. you got to make sure, is, am I meeting that requirement? Because if you're trying to apply that scripture and receive from that one scripture, uh, then, you know, uh, uh, and you, uh, but you're not applying it in context, you might miss something, and then you're wondering why that scripture isn't working. Mm -hmm. The context That's is good. really important. Yeah. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to search the scriptures and see, is there anything else that talks about what I'm believing God for? in the scriptures right. so that I can rightly divide what I'm hearing here. Right. Amen. Exactly. Now, people, in doing that, that's so important because what you've just done is you've developed your heart uh, to conform to the will of God. Mm -hmm. And when you conform your heart to the will of God, uh, whatever you ask for in accordance with His will, God will see it done in your life. Mm -hmm. That's important. Amen. You the problem with our prayer life and the reason why we're not obtaining sometimes 
is because we're missing the mark. That means we're not doing the will of God in certain areas of our lives. Mm -hmm. Amen. All God wants you to do is to practice righteousness. He's not asking you to be perfect. Or else if he was asking you to be perfect, then he would not tell you to repent. Mm -hmm. When you make a mistake, you don't have to be perfect. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying practice. Be serious about living right before God and doing your best to do so. Mm -hmm. and, and then start developing those habits. Right. Amen? Amen? God is so good. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, doing the will of God, searching the scriptures, pondering the scriptures, meditating on the scriptures, bringing to that place to doing the will of God mm -hmm. and to have a successful prayer life. Amen. Look at Mar John, 1 John 5.14 says, and this is the confidence. Mm -hmm. And confidence is always an attribute of faith. Uh, and this is the confidence that we have in Him, that is, in our Father, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Notice that we have to ask in accordance with His will. Mm -hmm. Amen? So, let's start examining the Scriptures. Uh, in order to put what God is saying uh, mm -hmm. into proper perspective. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's another thing the Word of God does for you. It will always give you a better perspective. Right. The right, right perspective. Amen. That's because, right. you know, the human nature can have a crazy perspective. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, sure. Right. Absolutely. I mean, you know. <laughs> uh, like you said, it's tainted by sin. It, so it's, it's tainted by sin. You know, like, you got no money. But you really want to go out and eat, mm -hmm. you know. So you talk yourself into going out and eat. <laughs> and then you wonder, oops, what happened <laughs> to that money for that bill? Well, you <laughs> ate it. <laughs> right? That's right. <laughs> that wasn't God's will for you to spend your rent money on that meal. Yeah. You did that. Right. Believe it or not, that's a big problem. People do yeah. that. Yeah. And then they go, well, where's the money? <laughs> <laughs> well, you went on that lavish vacation <laughs> when God, when you knew things were tight. Mm -hmm. But you wanted it. It's good, it made yeah, you good. happy. It's a good example. And so you did it. Mm -hmm. And you see nothing wrong with it. But now you're wondering, well, how come my faith didn't work? How come you didn't meet my, my needs? Well, he was trying. <laughs> The need was met. <laughs> That's right. You just went on vacation <laughs> with it. <laughs> or, you know, you went out to dinner or, you know, you, mm -hmm. you, you pick, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on a shopping spree or something. Yeah. Or you bought a toy or whatever. Yeah, it could be anything. You bought a toy. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're running around with a, with a sports car <laughs> and you can't make the payments. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know. Things are tough enough. There's enough tax on attacks on our lives because the enemy's always fighting yeah. us. And, uh, and then it's, it's for us to be doing, making mistakes like that. Right. Again, I'm talking about you have this knowing yeah. that you shouldn't, but you do. Yeah. Because your pleasures override what you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's good. God is so good. I feel like I'm teaching this morning's message all over again. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, okay, we are going to study uh, the healing of blind Barnabas in Mark chapter 10. But we have to first look at Mark chapter 11, verses 22 to 24, in order to grasp the condition of Barnabas' heart. And we will uh, find that blind Barnabas unintentionally operated within the confines uh, or within the conditions uh, set by Mark 11, 22, mm -hmm. and 24. Now, let me give you some insights. We're talking context here, right? Because mm -hmm. we just made this statement about studying the context. So, obviously, Mark chapter 10 is before Mark chapter 11. Mm -hmm. Blind Barnabas is in, in, in Mark chapter 10. But the disciples, they weren't really happy with blind Barnabas. They tried to quiet in silence in him. Mm -hmm. They were kind of rebuking him you know, uh, right. and to keep quiet, not to bother the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, they missed a lesson. And th what was that lesson? How did 
blind Bartimaeus tap in to his healing? Mm -hmm. How did he get healed? What did, what happened? Right. They completely missed what he what, what he was doing mm -hmm. by faith, right? Right. right? Prompted by faith, they completely missed it. So, in order to understand what happened to blind Bartimaeus, let's uh, first look at Mark eleven twenty one to twenty four, because then Jesus had to use this other teaching right. th that was brought about by the fig tree to teach them what they should have already grasped. Right. It's good. Amen. Through Amen. blind Barnabas. Right. Amen. Uh, so uh, <laughs> God is good. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, so let's go to Mark. Uh, I'm going to read Mark. You want to read it? Sure. Uh, Mark 11, verses 21 through 24 says, yeah. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curseth is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Amen. Glory be to God. Okay. So, Mark 11, uh, 22, starts off by saying, have faith in God, mm -hmm. that is, trust in Him wholly, depend upon Him, rely on Him, mm -hmm. be confident in Him, right? Amen. Uh, 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 not on what you see or feel. That's right. This is a heart condition based on total reliance upon God, mm -hmm. total assurance and conviction. That's right. Persuasion. Amen. Amen. That's faith. Amen. And that's believing in faith and operation. Uh, so Jesus said, have faith in God. Mm -hmm. Amen. The actual Greek says, uh, have the God kind of faith, or mm -hmm. to be more precise, uh, uh, you possess mm -hmm. the God kind of faith, or, right. or possess the God kind of faith. Right. Um, so in verse 23, Jesus goes on by saying, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea. The word whosoever, what an interesting word, amen, means any or every believer who chooses to speak to the mountain or obstacles in their lives and see them removed. Mm -hmm. These instructions apply to them. They are the whosoever's mm -hmm. mentioned in this passage of scripture. Amen. No one is left out. That's right. Or is excluded from this promise. Mm -hmm. amen. From what Jesus said here. No one. Amen. Now, what happens? How come it goes wrong? Because we're not complying to what has been said. We have to start out with have faith in God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then that faith has to transition into believing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Believing in the heart. And then it says and do not doubt in your heart. So there has to be the removal of all doubt. Right. Amen. Which is easy because faith will drive it out. That's right. Amen. Amen. Uh, but nonetheless, you know how people start out believing. They hear the word of God. They, they hear, oh, that's good. That's good. They're getting a revelation of it. That's good. That's good. They walk out the door and they lose it. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Mm -hmm. And doubt comes in. Well, I don't know. I don't see no change. <laughs> there they go again. <laughs> That's good. And then you start acting like, why are you always talking like that? Well, what are you doing? You're freaking out. People, that's doubt. Mm -hmm. That's right. And it started right here in the head. Yep. You, you just, yeah. you got to understand, you can't be in faith and doubt. Mm hmm See, when Peter was walking on the water and the waves were going and the Bible says he feared mm -hmm. because he saw the storm, he saw the waves. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he feared and Jesus rebuked him and said, Oh, you of little faith, why right. did you doubt? So that fear was doubt. Mm -hmm. so, fe so doubt can come in many forms. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. 
But here's one thing that you need to know. The doubt will always disagree or and contradict the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Always. That's right. Amen. So how do you recognize it? Are my thoughts and my feelings contradicting what I'm believing God for? That's it. Amen. You know, uh, 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 mm-hmm. is my attitude showing that I don't really believe? Now, are these all these tears, screaming and yelling, does that indicate that uh, I'm really not in faith? <laughs> that there's a lot of doubt in my heart? Right. Yes, that's what that means. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Amen? That's exactly right. So I don't mean to be rude. I'm just trying to point out mm-hmm. why we can't obtain the Word of God sometimes Mm -hmm. because this is crucial. You can't doubt in your heart. And it comes in many different forms. Mm -hmm. But the way you can tell is it always contradicts the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Always. That's good. It always tells you that God's not going to do it. God isn't doing it. It's not happening. Mm -hmm. Always tells you that. Right. Faith tells you, I have it. I have it now. Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. Okay, uh, verse 24 says, or we already read that, amen. Uh, 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 <laughs> thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Uh, Jesus continues by saying, and shall not doubt in his heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, notice that Jesus is referring to a heart condition that possesses no doubt. Mm-hmm. Shall not doubt in his heart. Amen. Again, there needs to be no doubt allowed into the activity of our hearts. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Because it will rob you of your convictions. Right. Amen. Now, let me say this to you. I think it's in uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, uh, the word of God is sharper Mm -hmm. than any two-edged sword. Uh, uh, the word of God is quick and sharper than any two-edged sword. In other words, it's alive. Mm-hmm. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. So you take a two-edged sword in the natural, and you say, well, the word of God is sharper than that. Mm-hmm. So the word of God is sharper than any knife mm-hmm. that can be produced in the natural. Right. Amen? It's sharper than any knife. And it says, dividing asunder. Mm-hmm. Dividing asunder soul and spirit. Amen. And is able to judge. That's good. Amen? That's a good scripture. Uh, the soul and the intense of the heart, mm-hmm. the spirit of man. Amen. Amen. What is this for? For self, self uh, scrutiny. Right. To scrutinize what's going on in your heart. Now, it's a merismos, right? Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. Dividing asunder is the Greek word merismos. It just means to divide, open up for the purpose of scrutiny. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, it, it's time for you to clean up right. your act. Right. Clean up what's going on inside. That belongs to every individual believer that to allow the Word of God to cut them open. Uh, You don't need for people to tell you to get right. Mm -hmm. Well, you might if you're not getting right yourself. (laughs) (laughs) You know, but but the the point is, is that God's telling you to open, the the Word of God will open up and help you to get rid of all this stuff, right? Uh, uh, Here's the point, that is able to divide asunder soul and spirit, which is the heart. So the soul and spirit is a spiritual muscle that's comprised of your soul, your mind, will, and emotions, and your spirit. God speaks to your spirit. The enemy manipulates the soul. Right. Amen? That's right. But one can pollute the other. Right. Or one can change the other. Right. Amen? What's in your spirit can affect your soul. Mm -hmm. But what's in your soul can pollute your spirit. That's right. And so... It, it's it's to your benefit to let the Word of God open you up. Mm-hmm. Amen. And if you can't do that, it's going to affect you receiving from God. That's right. Amen. Uh, God is so good, isn't Amen. he? Uh, uh, let's see. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Father God. Uh, in, in other words, the person, uh, a person is asked not only uh, what the heart okay in other words the person is asked to say what the person is asked to say is only what the heart believes that's right amen or is convinced of I call this uh, uh, faith filled words mm-hmm. when your heart is speaking out your convictions right 
your, the, the inward assurances that, the, that comes with the Word of God, mm -hmm. which is faith. Amen. Your heart's to be speaking these things. But what happens is our emotions and our thoughts, uh, <coughs> because we're not in the Word all the time, and because we're not choosing to turn to the Lord, mm -hmm. uh, then our emotions begin to govern our lives. Right. Our thoughts begin to govern our lives. Right. And then the only thing that visits you there is, well, misery. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and it comes and goes. It fluctuates with how things are going in your life. Right. But you can have peace. You can have victory every minute of the day. Amen regardless of what you're going That's through, right. if you just look at the scriptures. That's right. Amen. And let the Word of God do its job. Mm -hmm. Let the Holy Ghost do its job. You can't live the way that the Bible tells you to live without the Holy Ghost That's and right. without the Word of God. Amen. You just can't live that way. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's not obtainable through human means. God's given you a spirit life. And that spirit life is what the Holy Ghost communicates to. Amen. It's what the Word of God penetrates. That's right. It's what the Word of God is established in. Amen. Wh what did Jesus say in John 15, 7? He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and they shall be given unto you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, in, that, in that interesting portion of Scripture, if you abide in me, in other words, we have a lot of things, but they're all in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. They're all in Jesus. They're not in you. Right. They're in Jesus. Amen. God didn't say, I give you redemption in you. He <laughs> says, you're redeemed in Jesus. Right. In Jesus. That means you've planted yourself in Jesus. And when you've planted yourself in Jesus, in His Word, in His way of living, mm -hmm. when you've done that, and then you've taken that word and allowed it to be planted in you. Then you ask. Mm -hmm. And then it's done. Why? That's right. Amen. Because then you're praying in accordance to the will of God. That's right. And you're ensured that your prayers will be answered. Mm -hmm. That's all you have to do. Amen. Thank, and I know that sounds easy. But, you know, then you have yourself to deal with. Right. And what I mean by that is a self-nature. Yeah. And so just let that die. <laughs> You Amen. know, just say, hey, you're not helping me. Now, don't go out and shoot yourself or anything. I'm just saying, I'm talking spiritually speaking. You have to allow yourself to live out of your heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of things that we do are okay. Uh, but all I'm saying is, what is God's will for your life? Mm -hmm. It's separate. For, it's, diff it's a little different for everybody. Right. Although we all have things that are required of us that are the same. Mm -hmm. Like we're all required to be in church. Mm -hmm. We're all required to, to receive the Word. Mm -hmm. We're all required to obey the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. We're all required to work with Him. Everybody is. Although we might be called to different things, we may right. change some things, but there's still these requirements. That's right. Amen. And if we learn to understand that, life gets easier for us. Amen. Much easier. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. But understand, when you decide to live like that, the devil will challenge your faith. Mm -hmm. He will challenge your faith, mm -hmm. and things will go wrong. Amen. But but if you hang on and hold on to your faith, which we'll be talking about this later in this teaching, if you hold on to your faith, there's nothing he can do about that. That's right. That's good. Amen. Amen. And, and, and you will prevail because God is God is giving you the greater one that abides in you that Amen. is designed to cause you to 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 prevail and overcome. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I get the feeling we're never going to get. Uh, we're only on page three of these <laughs> notes. I, uh, why do I do that all the time? Yes. Uh, if uh, based upon what someone just said or uh, uh, and uh, has been struggling uh, with their circumstances and the situations in life and how they're living and how everything is just seems to be overwhelming them and overcoming them understand uh, please uh, uh, don't abandon your faith in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. uh, he is your redeemer he is your deliverer give him a chance uh, 
refuse to think the way that you're thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, you have been empowered uh, over your thoughts and your mind. Uh, you have to understand that, that these thoughts, these suicidal thoughts, these thoughts of destruction, these thoughts that come to you that tell you you're not worth anything, you're never going to be worth anything, you're never going to have anything, and that your life is over, it's ruined, mm -hmm. you have to rebuke that, mm -hmm. because that's not God's plan for your life. Uh, slowly, slowly, start getting into the Word of God, and just, just start, find a scripture that promises you, like for instance, I just quoted a scripture today, I think it was in 1 John 4, 4, that says, uh, and you have overcome little children, mm -hmm. for greater is him that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Take that scripture and start quoting it to yourself and let it get in you. Let it get in you so deep that, it, that you can't deny the truth of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. That, Amen. What I'm saying is, you become thoroughly convinced that the greater one is in you and he's producing a miracle for you in your life. Mm -hmm. A series of miracles if that's mm -hmm. what you need. And learn to live with and for God. And God will deliver you. Give him the time that's necessary. Don't give up ever. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I've been there. When I was a, a, a teenager, I could never do anything right. I was always disappointing everybody in my life. I was a, a mess. I could never do nothing right, and I tried to take my life. Thankfully, and I wasn't saved, but thankfully some friends of mine uh, got concerned for me, it broke into my home, my parents' home, and found me laying in a pool of blood, and called the hospital, and it, I was rushed to the hospital, and thank God the Lord Amen. saved me Amen. and kept me alive and I thought my life was over after that I get older and I went to prison twice the whole time I felt I wasn't worth it wasn't worth saving wasn't couldn't contribute to anybody hurt everybody I came in contact with destroyed everything I touched until I got born again and slowly and surely God began to real, I began to realize through the scriptures that I wasn't worthless, mm -hmm. that I was created in God's image, and that there was hope. And slowly and surely, God delivered me. Amen. Now I got a wife and children, uh, and I got a home and a car, two cars. Uh, it may not be much to m a lot of people, and they still need a lot of work, everything does. But I have something I never thought I could have. Mm -hmm. I contribute to people that I never thought I could contribute to. Amen. I'm a pastor of Redeemed Christian Fellowship. I minister to people by the Holy Ghost that are ten times smarter than I am, wiser than I am, more capable of doing anything than I am. But yet, the Spirit of God uses me. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God can help you and use you too and make you shine in the midst of everybody. Amen. Amen. Trust me, I know what I'm saying. May the Lord God bless you. Please give God a chance to work in your life. God bless you. Well, that's all we have for today. We love all of you. And, uh, and, and uh, 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 know that you can overcome. Mm -hmm. Amen. And through these series of teachings that me and Brad are going to do and things, teachings that I'm doing, uh, in the morning service, if you just tune into those, you'll start to see something uh, that will allow you to cooperate with God and allow uh, God to work in your life. Amen. And your life will change. That's right. I know that for sure because that's what he said. Trust him. Believe in him. You have to trust in him. You have to let the word of God speak to you. You have to hold on to these revelations. But it will work. Mm -hmm. God bless you. We are dismissed. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If 
you have a testimony of how the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.